Welcome to another VBA tutorial. This is an update to my last one where I kind of showed you a macro that I created and I think that it can be of use for you at your work center today so I wanted to get this out here. It's beyond the scope of um, most of the tutorials that I've done so far but I think you can follow along and let's just show you what it does and we'll go from there. So in my list here, my data set, part A goes down to here and then it goes to part C, D and all these other different parts. Well if I have a couple hundred of these or a couple thousand I want to analyze these all separately not together and I don't want to create a pivot table or anything like that I just want these all in their own tabs. I kind of got sick of cutting and pasting all this stuff all the time so not only did I automate that process I also added some analysis uh, and using some of the um, data analysis tools you'll see just in a moment as I demonstrate. Excuse my voice, I'm a little sick. Okay, so let's look at the code real quick. Um, I've got all these different calls to different functions that I use. I've got a couple of different modules that I've kind of separated out the data. Like this one is for data manipulation, trying to manipulate the data. Um, this is kind of a, uh, let's pretty up, let's do a, a template on like a uh, start page with an index, things like that. And then I'm kind of trying to put some descriptive statistics in there. So I kind of separate the math from the manipulation from the, the beautification of this just to keep things clean like that. Anyways, I wrote this code really quick so it's not the best, it's not the perfect code, but it'll, it'll do the job. So let's hit play and I'll show you what it does. It asks us where the header row is and that's row six. And then it says start in row of data or row seven. And finally, it's asking, what's the column of interest? Now, I'm going to automate this where you can put in a letter or a field. But for now, I just put A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2. So I'm interested in, in column 3, the C column, because that's how I want to separate these out. Now, if you had it on a different column, it's fine. If you had uh, um, maybe column B had various uh, things you wanted to separate into their own tabs, you could have done uh, number 2. It doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and hit number three and let this thing play. It might take a few minutes. As you can see, it's doing something now. It's spitting out a lot of data. It's actually looking for the upper and lower limits to what data would even um, be an outlier or not. And then it's graphing the uh, raw data because nothing beats a good scatter plot when you're looking at data. Um, <clears throat> what's to come, though, is I want to take the, the uh, cleaned data and I want to create a side-by-side -side comparison of the descriptive statistics and the... Um, the graphs. I haven't got that far yet, but as you can see, this this alone will automate a lot for me and save me a bundle of time. So, with that being said, um, you can modify this to your own needs. It should work with any data as long as it's in sort of this this type of um, uh, deal here. Um, so, so make sure you sort your raw data file first because I don't have a sort in here, and I believe it only works with it sorted. Um, <laughs> I have to double check. Okay, so here we are. So well, this is my my definitions and business rules page. I have a tab index, so I can go to any part that I want. Part D. So here we go. Part D. Here's all the analysis. Here's the gr the green is what's good. The uh, white is out our outliers. We have an upper and lower limit here. So if it's above 32 or below five, it's considered an outlier. And this is all based on the uh, quartile. Uh, ranges and whatnot. <clears throat> so that's how I did that. So basically uh, the green is within the upper and lower limits and the uh, and the white is not. Did that for each field. That's a numeric. Um, it knows enough to see if it's a numeric or not. Um, and then I have descriptive statistics using um, the, the data analysis set, which is under here, data, data analysis, descriptive statistics. So there's some code in there for that. I'll show you that in a second. And then of course I created the scatter plots, which I'm gonna I'm gonna make changes to these because this is the raw data, and I want to actually I want to create a macro that'll run through all these and actually only pick up the good data and produce a graph on that as well. But descriptive statistics are here: the mean, the standard area, median, mode, all that good stuff, all the way down for each and every single uh, field, and for every single tab, right? And of course, my index you can go back to back to the index right here. And what this index also has is it creates this raw data key. This is very important for an, anal an analysis because you can define what these are. Um, I understand what date is, but what does MD mean? Tell tell the world what it means. What is field one? What does that mean? What percentage are we looking at? And so on and so on. So this is very crucial right here to fill out. Um, generic rules applies. 
you know, I'm just beginning to learn this stuff myself. So outliers, did you use them? Did you not? Are you using zeros or blanks? Or what if there's an NA, right? So that's kind of what I was kind of putting here. This is just a generic thing. You can make changes to it. Uh, data source and the, the data pull date. When did you actually pull the data and from what source? And of course, you can add more as you need them. Um, Oh, and it put in my son's name here. <laughs> it's taken the profile name from your uh, your um, Microsoft Office, which I've paid for uh, multiple times, and so I don't know why this is activation failed. Okay, well, I hope you like this video, and uh, I'll post a code to my site, and uh, please leave your feedback or suggestions, what you want to include or what would be important, or anything I can learn. Thank you very much.